Namaste and welcome to Kala Yatra, a journey through traditional performing arts. We've been meeting with some of the finest artists in the New England area, which includes vocal, violin, dance, veena, and mridangam. Today, we have a very versatile artist from the New England area who has been in the US since 1994. He's a mridangist who performs, teaches, and also organizes. He has performed numerous concerts with artists from various states in the US and also visiting artists from India. He has also performed many jugal bandis with Hindustani musicians and also has been teaching for almost two decades. He has created a platform to perform for the next generation, which, which is one of the biggest challenges in today's times. Coming from a strong, traditional and cultural background, he has made a name for himself in the community with sheer passion and dedication to performing arts. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Shri Mahalingam Santana Krishnan, also fondly known as Mali. Namaste and welcome, Mali. How are you? I'm doing well, Aparna. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. How is your family? Uh, how are things at home? With God's grace, everybody is safe. And uh, back at home, it's a, it's a little bit tough because they cannot move around. It's very restricted, etc. But but they are coping up and it's uh, uh, it's been going good. But by God's, God's grace. That's good to hear. So yeah. how, how has COVID changed your life? Uh, first, of, your... <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. It's a, it's a real honor, real pleasure for me to uh, be here with you. Oh, come on. Come on. Yeah. We yeah. have had so many uh, moments together, so, so many experiences uh, performing together, organizing concerts, and uh, it's been a pleasure just being around all of you. So I've Absolutely. been mentioning this in every interview that mm -hmm. I owe this to all of you because nice I've more. learned a lot from the artists, the community, you know, our people. Uh, so I... COVID has really, you know, uh, churned things around in everybody. Yeah. And I felt it's it's a small way of giving it back from where yeah. we have taken. Yeah. So, and also, you know, many students will come to know of the different perspectives because they get to see you on stage, mm -hmm. but they never get to see us interact off stage or they never get to interact with you leisurely or casually. So that I just true. wanted to create some platform where, you know, it will be beneficial for more than us. So it's a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So coming back to the situation currently, everybody has been, you know, uh, kind of clueless and uh, taken by surprise with this COVID-19. So how are things at your end? How has this changed you, your um, routine, your uh, work, classes, performances, everything? Um. You were, the, the, the word that you used, clueless, is a very apt description of where we started and where we are right now. You know, like <laughs> I was also one of those folks who was in denial, right? Mm -hmm. All these things are going to go away quickly and everybody's making a big thing out of nothing, etc. I was on, on that boat, right? Mm -hmm. I was not ignoring it. I was not dismissing it, but I was very perplexed about that, uh, the attention it was getting and uh, um, uh, in hindsight we should have been even been even more careful if we had been even more careful we will not be where we are today so that's uh, right. so in that in that context certainly clueless with where, where, where it came from what it did to us what it is doing to us it's uh, it's beyond imagination uh you know, they, you asked about classes and performances, etc. Right? There is a very interesting change that has happened in a class perspective. Uh, from a from a classes standpoint, I have to say upfront, there is no substitute for in-person education. True. Right? Yeah. Whatever technology offers, 
it does not offer that in person eye to eye contact where you observe every body language of the student and understand whether the student is into the thing or not into the thing whether the student has checked out or checked in you, you just cannot judge that in 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 uh, a, a non online class in a skype class etc right? so so covid has definitely shifted us to taking remote classes mm-hmm. so that remote classes has its own advantages and disadvantages one of the um, for me as a uh, mridangist and i'm sure that you as a teacher as a vocalist as a teacher also you'll see something similar is the biggest handicap i see is we cannot play together right 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 student and teacher cannot play together because of the lag Right. no matter what the technology is that lag is there it's it's always one way one person plays finishes the next person plays finishes we make up make do with that with with the technology we have but it's not a, you don't feel the joy when you play together with the student and that student executes exactly what you are doing that exhilaration that joy is, is that that component is certainly missing yeah right? yeah absolutely are, yeah when they are doing it 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 online um the biggest uh, advantage of doing what we are doing remotely i see is there are no class absences at all now <laughs> right parents have nothing to do kids have nothing to do they are not going out and you know in a typical week i will have 25 to 30% of classes getting cancelled rescheduled etc hmm. now it is almost 100% wow okay yeah so that is a big shift big right. ad- it's 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 an advantage because kids have the continuity mm. in classes right. so normally when we have one class uh, once a week uh, when the kid misses a class or the teacher misses a class it sets them back you right. know especially if they know in advance that they are not going to have a class some kids have the dedication to practice some kids will just take it easy right mm-hmm. when you take it easy for a few days you know what happens right so so that uh, challenge is not there every week there is class every week the kids are practicing kids are prepared and kids are also uh, now they know how to more than us they know how to deal with online things right yeah yeah so remote education and online things and they know how to fill out practice sheets and they know you know like it's a, it's certainly an advantage in in on that side from a teaching perspective um but they, what i miss is that in person interaction right uh, yes. uh, hopefully this will all pass and we will come to um you know a normal state it will it will months. definitely it will, it will it change will. nothing is ever permanent right exactly uh, it so, will they bring make big changes that's that's yeah. what it is yeah correct yeah. correct exactly <laughs> so um the from a performance standpoint uh what i see is there are again there are challenges and there are um uh, advantages as well the challenge is as a accompanist because of all the uh you know india performer visits have been cancelled mm-hmm. right and all the in person concerts have been cancelled right i don't have the opportunity to sit on stage and play with like you know like not able to play with you in a concert not able to play with somebody coming in from india accompanying them in a concert right that is a big uh uh disappointment if you will right right see we we are having being so so far away from madras and these are the moments that we cherish as musicians right absolutely we yeah. teach we teach that's a lovely thing there is no question for our own satisfaction the practice that we have to do to keep up with our main artists right with our accompanists etc right so if i am going to play for you i have to make sure that i do full justice to the concert and and so i have to practice and i have to be on my game when i do that right the same thing with visiting artists as well so when when that when that is not there i say that the when there is, when the children know that there is no class they take it easy 
Right. When I know that there is no performance, in-person performance, it holds same the true to me as well. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yes. I don't put the same amount of effort in practicing. Uh, uh, you know, like I am being very candid here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I don't put the same amount of practicing uh, effort into. So that's a that's a uh, change. On the other hand, um, I'm able to get to spend some time on this because uh, I have a good setup at home, and I have a couple of young musicians accessible to me, like uh, you know Rasika and my Arvind and other musicians that can come here and sing. So I'm able to spend more time with them practicing right. and I'm able to spend more time with them playing in some of these online concerts that are that are going on. Right. right so right. me as a musician, this is my conversation. Now I'm able to spend more time with with, uh, with <laughs> up and coming yes, musicians. Yes. Right. And uh, that's an advantage. That's definitely an advantage. So what we what we lose is just not compensatable. But right. what I gain is also not measurable, right? It's like right. It's a, in both ways that there's plus and the, uh, challenges, you know. Like, it, it does even out, right? Yeah, yeah it, it does, does even, even out. out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I do miss the audience, you know, when, when, when even I've given a couple of online concerts, but it's not the same. You don't get the same feeling, right? At 100%. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. 100%. But uh, I'm happy for you. I do get to see you often. Uh, and I'm happy for you that uh, you are constantly engaged in sharing music. That's that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So you have learned from multiple gurus. So uh, I would like for you to share your uh, experiences being around them, what kind of tutelage you have had, and uh, some of your most cherished moments with them. Um, the my first guru, uh, P. Srinivas Ayer of uh, Madras, he was with Palgat Mani in Gurukulam for 50 years, right? Like with, with him forever until Mani Ayer's death. He was he was there with with Mani Ayer. So right, um, I'm absolutely blessed to be uh, to have started my learning with. Uh, uh, Chinu Mama and and he he was uh, uh, I go to his the way we used to have classes is weekly three days we had class almost an hour one hour class every three days and we have to practice every day uh, above and beyond the classes right so the amount of time that I spent with him there's a lot of time that I, I spent with my uh, first guru and uh, and um, the care that we he had for uh, he was one of the one of the best teachers, right? Mm -hmm. the, he was an older radio artist, one of the best teachers. He was not a super popular performer, right? Mm. Was good performer, great performer, but not a popular performer. Right. But as a teacher, he was like, he's just unbelievably patient and, and uh, uh, phenomenal teacher, right? So, and not only that, the amount of food I had eaten in that house, right? Whatever uh, Abba and uh, Danamami and you know, like they they treated me as their own child. So so every time I go there and the the time I spent with them, the you know, like it's it's just part of family, just part of being their son. That's so um, very very fond memories for about nine years. Uh, it was it was like continuous, right? So it was very fond memories, and and uh, the we did not have anything written down then hmm. Very true. there was no yeah. notations yeah everything was whatever he says i have to absorb and i have to play right so if i am able to retain whatever i retained from those initial lessons that's because of how the care that he took in teaching right right the the insistence that he had in making sure that he will not teach me anything unless I'm able to put talam and say that correctly and make sure that it comes out multiple times without any flaw. Any flaw right? That's when he will teach, Let allow me to touch the Mridangam and play. Right? Mm. So 
that amount of sincerity that amount of care that he took in teaching is what you know uh, allow is allowing me to teach to the children or share whatever i know to the children today that's because of him i owe everything to him hmm. uh, in in terms of teaching right so that's that's my first guru my second i had a very brief period with palagat ragumama Mm. this uh, this very fun uh, memories like it was about a few few months every week i will go and i'll have multiple hours of lessons and i'll come back it was here i will drive from here to new jersey take classes and come back over the weekend so and i was always afraid of him right? <laughs> because he was a, you know like simma he was a legend right? right right so he even giving me the opportunity sit, to sit in front of him and learned him like i just did not think that it would happen when he said yes and when it actually happened i was scared the only mm. thing that was uh, uh, scared in, not in the sense of like it's not scared of a teacher but scared and and be conscious that i should keep up my end of the bargain when he is willing to spend his time and teach me a person of that stature him right. allowing me to sit in front of him and teaching so that was that's the fear Right. right that's the scare that's that's what i'm going to say i'm scared about that's the fear that i need to do do justice i don't know right. whether i did or not but it was great experience great time and uh, you know the dimension the way he way he took it was very different level the what uh, the concepts that he taught me was very different right. and the 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 most pleasurable things in a couple of concerts i was able to sit next to him right mm. um you know as is uh, you know like to 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 serve him and sit next to him and serve him that was a uh, very memorable it was uh, he, at that time i think he was with tour with ravi kiran mm. um so in, in those concerts able to sit with him and you know like, and, and also one of the concerts was um, i still remember it was uh, yale or somewhere in connecticut it was a the concert where anand played double mridangam with ragumama Hmm. So Anand was like a tiny boy he was like 11 12 or something <laughs> like that at the time he played double mridangam and hmm. he was he was like playing stroke for stroke with ragumama in, in the double mridangam wow. and they you know they had taniya uh, vardanam for padavini three after okay wow. yeah unbelievable electric taniya vardanam between the two hmm. ragumama obviously is a legend but anand playing and doing what he did on the stage with him you know talk about experience that was right. a, that was a wonderful experience for me i you know i think that's uh, i'll keep with me forever Very nice. my current guru is um, uh tirichur narendran sir uh, i have no words to show my gratitude to him mm-hmm. um he's performer's performer and teacher's teacher right and i am very blessed to uh, be in the same lineage throughout right my first guru uh, maneer student ragumam maneer student and tirchu narendran sir is uh, narendra mama is uh, um, ragumam is the most senior student uh, so it is the same lineage yeah i just wanted to uh, you know pause for a second uh, is your internet connection okay mali Yeah, this good. Okay, because uh, you you freeze a little bit every now and then. Okay, okay. okay. sorry, okay. sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, give me uh, give me one second. Do you mind if I if step up and and do a direct uh, wi- a direct wired connection? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Go Is ahead. That okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give me a second. Thank you, thank you for fixing that, Mali. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, with uh, as with Narendra and uh, Maman, uh, you know. he's performer for performer and teacher teacher in the same lineage and he has such clarity when he is teaching and you know whether he is teaching to a 5 year old child or whether he is teaching to me his demeanor in teaching is exactly the same he's like the calmest water that you can find you know like mm. and he you know the slightest variation that you make he will he will spot immediately <laughs> right he will say that you know you should have put the finger there instead of here the fingering is this is how so it's like but at the same time 
he will not get worked up about anything at all wow right? so he's like <laughs> extremely calm when he is teaching so you always feel like you know somebody is like you know or kaila tu kyu chitala tramadri right somebody is always like uh, holding you and coddling you that's the feeling that he gives you when he is teaching right mm. um at the same time uh, uh you know i'll i'll say a little bit more about uh, a few other points maybe maybe later but the the his teaching and and my cherished experiences with him i hope i get to have many more with him is being able to sit with him actually and watch him play and occasionally play with him yeah you know, like, they call it double mardangam but that's not double mardangam it's more like upabhagavadyam sitting there and supporting him right <laughs> that's all it is yeah. <laughs> so but even to have that opportunity to sit with him and able to uh play with him uh and and absorb everything that he has to offer um it's you know he is limitless in offering mm. right it is my capacity that is restricting me to absorb whatever he is giving if hmm. i have more capacity he will give more he is just he is just boundless limitless unbelievable teacher unbelievable right. teacher so he is one of the greatest performers um you know i do see i do hear a lot of musicians perform today right there is a marked difference when he is playing when hmm. some of the other folks are everybody has their own style but you can see right that right. that gambiram that rajanade that like elephant walking right it's uh, that gambiram you see when when narendra mama is sitting and play so mm. so it's a uh, it's just a it's absolute blessing very nice um how about your experience being a teacher uh to many students here uh when i started teaching you know like i for the first few years i did not teach because i was a consultant and i did not know when i have to move etc because teaching is a commitment yeah you, absolutely especially yeah. when you did not have technology like like what we have now there is no way you can start teaching pick up your bags and just leave that is mm. not an option at all so uh i started teaching only only when i got to a point where i know that i am going to be here i'm not going anywhere right that's when i actually started teaching the first students uh, were my friends children hmm. right obviously uh, one of them was varun uh, my like and the other one is kaushik so the, 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 the two kids the, what i told them was they are more of a teachers to me than hmm. i am a teacher to them right more of the, the the reason is teaching is a very different cup of tea than playing right you need to have uh, the number one you need to have the patience to teach number two you need to be able to uh, understand their point of view and be able to you know like it's not uh, it's not just completely a one way thing right so being able to interact with them and understand and and uh, understand their learning style and adapting and teaching them so that they they you know one of the things that uh, if it is let's say uh, if it is in india right if you have um, there are like lot of students if one of them doesn't pan out or a few of them don't pan out you just let them go and like you just you don't have limited amount of time you spend the time teaching other children right? right right here with the amount of uh, entertainment possibilities that children have the fact that children are actually coming in and sitting in front of us and learning in itself is uh, is an extra step right right so what i was afraid about and conscious now is i don't want to be uh, i don't want to do something to make them lose interest right i always say for me if the success for me as a teacher is if my student in those days a tape then a cd then an mp3 track or whatever it is 
they put something by themselves and listen mm. not because when their that their, their parents had put a carnatic music track and they are listening to it right they themselves actually go in and sit down and put something and listen if they had developed that love for the music the passion for the music that is my success mm. if they get on stage that's a bonus yeah yeah makes sense yeah and that's what i tell the t- uh, parents when i when i when i take new students so if i so the same thing then same thing now if right. if if the, if i could do something my part to develop that passion in them develop that love in them that is what i am i i look for that's what i um, see as teacher so so when i started with those children that's what i said and i to a large extent that's how i feel feel now they, as the children advance they become more advanced students i have to be on my toes right yeah, i teach yeah. more advanced concepts you 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 know like on this part you think a lot of things right, right? when you are when you are teaching a plain vanilla core way to them and they are playing while they are playing you are also actually thinking what can we do to expand this yeah. and you challenge them and they respond and they come up with things that you never thought about yeah absolutely oh yeah right it happens so, yeah. right so so that interaction you know like with the students is i absolutely love that inter- interaction with with students so uh, and now i have a structured way of teaching the younger ones so you know like from where i was where i started where i am now uh, i love the journey and uh, uh, this give and take this understanding of the students and trying to keep them motivated right um, we don't have un- unlimited supply of students yeah yeah especially for mrdangam right yeah uh, so keeping that interest level up it's it's kind it will sound silly right to some extent it will sound silly but i think that is also uh, if you want to create more murdangas we have to sustain their their passion and motivation and bring them out on the other end so yes. that's uh, uh, so that's some of the things that i i don't know whether i answered your question or not but you did you are, did it was very nicely brought out you did <laughs> oh. yeah so yes the the experience in you know sharing your knowledge through teaching is definitely more addition to your knowledge uh, as much it is performing so being a teacher does take a lot and as you said to create that interest in them is actually the biggest responsibility we have yeah. because once we do that we don't have to worry about sustainability right, right? so exactly. yeah you rightly said it you just answered my question uh so my next question would be uh, why mridangam why what drew you to mridangam specifically i would not i don't know I, I, there's no specific reason why i i, I didn't choose mridangam right it chose uh, you uh no not that <laughs> for that that i'm not that's that though that's like palgat mani or pani subramanian like category okay? right right then come to choose them so uh for me it was my father uh was a very good friend of my guru right so uh next door neighbors when my peripa uh, was next door neighbor of my guru and i never apa goes there uh, you know like they 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 know forever they like family right my apa is very close to palgat mani family as yes, well so um appa basically said go to cinema and learn hmm. i went to cinema and started learning <laughs> that's 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 that's, uh, it. Oh, okay. that's it right so in at that age what do what do i think it's uh, you right. know like the, the children these days they have uh, you know like when they are seven or eight they have an inclination they have a passion they show interest all those things are you know they, they the exposure they have to different things is very different and the maturity they have is very different these days in those days just like sent and I, i started learning i liked it i continued very nice okay i'm so and, happy you and, did and and uh, again my teacher right you know he did everything that he had to do so that i stayed up with it and i didn't lose interest right mm. so i'm talking about doing that uh today but implicitly somehow chinimama did that to me that right. i continued 
right? Right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very happy you did that uh, because I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed performing with you. So you. yeah, it's a pleasure to share the stage with you. So um, I have seen you perform for concerts, Karnati concerts, then uh, Hindustani, you know, uh, collaboration, Jugal Bandis, and also Sampraday Bhajan. So how did you get introduced to Sampraday Bhajan? Uh, my grandfather, my father, my peripa, my grandfather's Anna Mutuba Gaudar, they all, uh, my, my grandfather was Vinayak Sastrigal and my Mutuba Gaudar, uh, my grandfather's, my Peripa Narayana Bhagavadar and my Appa Santanakshi Bhagavadar, they're all like, I was just a Nama Sankirtanam family, right? Okay. So if I had gone away from it, that would have been a surprise. Me being in that, it's not a surprise at all, right? Right. Um, but there is a very interesting twist in this. My Appa's bhajan is all uh, up-tempo bhajan is, mm. right? like very high energy up-tempo bhajan is. Mm. So as a young per- young person, there was no way that I could cope up with the speed, speed. and the energy of that bhajan. So hmm. he will not allow me to sit in there. Right? He will allow me to sit and listen, sing, etc. But never allow to uh, play. play when I was very young. Right? Um, that I owe what I am playing today to Sampradaya bhajan. Okay. Uh, because uh, I have also heard many leading with ones including simushan raja mama like uh, say that i'm playing for those bhajanas is what settled their hands hmm. right? because you you uh, get used to playing the fundamentals so often right? right exactly and the variation and the speed at which things move they you know like it, it settles the hand down it, it just gives the dexterity and the speed and everything that you need for so um, but you just have to make sure that you don't get into that bhajana id right? right you stay with your core fundamental of kacheri playing but at the same time you utilize the nama sankirtanam to settle your hands down so it's right. a it's a, a balance that you have to find so i owe it to adambakam venkatramani mama hmm. who was like most of the hari hari nama bhajana hari bhajana amrutam books are all will have his name today right? okay adambakam venkatramani mama and karur krishnamurthy mama Right. Mm. So they are both from Adambakam. Uh, I, I grew up in Adambakam. Two or three years from Dasmamlam, I went to Adambakam. So that's uh, that's where I grew up. So they allowed me to sit in their bhajanais and play because their bhajanais, Karur Mama's bhajanai is like a more sangeeta mana bhajanai. Right, right, like, right. A little bit more sangeeta mana bhajanai. I've heard, yeah, yeah. Right. And our uh, Bengatramni Mama, he is one of you know, like his passion is to bring up the children, right. so he allowed me and his son ram kumar so he allowed us to sit and play in his bhajanas so once you start playing for those bhajanas once you get a hang of it and you are able to understand the flow what comes after what etc that's when i could sit with my father and and play for his bhajanas but for actually to allow me to even begin with and give me that opportunity every week three hours sitting down and playing for those bhajanas i owe it to them i have right. to tell the name wherever i talk about my my journey my experience those two played a big part in in uh, in where i am right now so, wonderful wonderful yeah. uh so now let's talk about mali the organizer so mm. <laughs> we have seen mali the performer mali the teacher mali the sampraday bhajan you know tradish, traditional uh uh torch bearer uh in in you know in the recent past i've seen you do that in uh, many occasions so what has made you be one of the organizers in this area uh, my involvement with khmc right uh, the carnatic hindustani music circle goes past back to 95 that's uh, 94 wow. uh, i came here 95 i started getting involved in that uh, group with suresh mathur ji and uh, you know datta dandekar ji and and the, the people that were who were running that at that at that time um 25 years now right 25 almost years, yeah. 25 years wow now, right exactly so so as much as i owe my playing to um overall playing to ramani mama and uh, uh, karur mama uh, you know i owe 
my playing after coming to the us completely to completely to suresh madurai right mm. and it, so because he created the platform he gave the opportunity for performers in the area to come and and play uh you know and in those days it was mostly performers that were getting together and playing right it's not uh, not even regular audience regular audience is very few but mostly performers right. so th- that platform is what kept it going right like mm-hmm. after being a being a single person coming here i could have done any number of things for me to continue playing mridangam is the platform that he offered so when he uh, wanted to take a step back and you know like there are number of uh, organizers in this area that are like durga Durga Krishnan and uh, uh, you know Jayanti Ketraju and uh, there's a number of people in this area that that are involved with that thing. Right. When he took a step back, uh, he said, uh, "You guys have to take this on from now on, right? So uh, you are the next generation. You have to take it on." Um, that is how I got into organizing. That is how I got became a part of KHMC. That's one thing. And right. after that. after a few years spending with khmc after that it is a, it is a matter of like organizing other concerts so once you once your network grows once you know that you can get 50 to 75 to 100 people into come bring them in you can easily arrange a concert right, right when you right. and people are coming in if you are if you can set Absolutely. it up Absolutely yeah then then it it goes to the point that's how right. the organizing part came and the giving back part of it right especially having providing the opportunity for the children somebody provided us the opportunities that's why we are doing what we are doing somebody right. needs to provide the opportunity for the children so that they carry on with this thing and and take it to the next generation right, right. right. so uh, we uh, it's, it's our duty we owe it to the children we owe it to the community to to be to do that so that's the that's what got me in that's the reason why i'm i'm able to do a little bit in, in that area yeah it, it it does take a lot of time you know and you are already juggling quite a bit and uh, it's uh, very uh, you know nice of you that uh, you thought that way and you've been trying to give it back so that's kudos to you and your team so what does it take to be a good accompanist in your opinion and what have been your experience experiences performing with some of the prominent visiting artists the um number one thing is being able to enjoy the melody on stage right being able to fully get involved with what the main singer is singing right and enjoy the melody that is number one thing number two thing is listening enough that you learn you you hear a lot of sahityams Mm. so understanding the sahitya knowledge understanding the flow understanding how things progress right and uh, understanding when to give the weight and when to play subtly and you know like not gaining that experience by listening to stalwarts playing um that is the that is the second thing sahitya knowledge and listening a lot you know right. that, that's 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 critical uh, in in uh, in accompanying uh you know bhavam the mood of the song the mood of the audience the mood of the singer understanding that and playing accordingly you know like you cannot be totally off and play whatever you know right and the other things don't align it does not make any sense at all right so having that knowledge um so that is what um that's what makes it uh, um you know i think that's that those are important ingredients for a good accompanist okay right? okay five knowledge and <clears throat> and uh, as far as uh, accompanying uh, what was the second part of your question hi your experiences uh, performing with uh, uh, yeah visiting exactly. artists because uh, uh, <laughs> whether uh, whether we you know see it that way or not when when you see a performer who is in the mainstream uh, there is a little bit of more tension to perform with them than uh than people who are teaching and performing right so there is yeah. a difference between that than a full time performer and a teacher and a performer yeah. so there are other things that you need to be aware of like you need to be extra alert uh, if i may say so you need to be more prepared of their style um you know um so what what have been your experiences have you been put on the spot by any of them or uh, have you 
learned just you know playing for them what what have been your experiences oh uh, you know, like uh, they don't put you on spot you put yourself on the spot right so <laughs> <laughs> most of them are very supportive uh, when when you are playing so uh, uh it is a blessing to be able to able to uh, play with all these stalwarts right um i sometimes think had i stayed in india right, if i had take if i did not take mrudangam as my career i was like then i would have been one of the audiences sitting in front of the stage right i won't even be able to see these people in up close and person right they'll finish their kacheri and move through the back door that's it right, don't right. even see them right and being having the opportunity to actually be with them and play for them it's one of the blessings that you know like as much as you miss being in madras and being so far away that's a blessing right, right. so, so that's, i agree uh, yeah you know, i totally a, agree the opportunity what this place has afforded that i'm not sure unless i took that as a profession whether, whether india would have uh, madras would have afforded me right so um yeah definitely for for uh, you know when i was playing for europe or west mama the first time right uh i i had butterflies right <laughs> so um molevas chandra moli mama was and i was playing the violin so he had to settle me down he has to give me i signal saying that <laughs> hey don't be afraid <laughs> be yourself play right so so that those butterflies when you play for the first time with somebody um is is very critical and from the second third after that he you know the first concert you have because he's such a big shot right? Right. i'm sitting with him and playing is like Yeah. so those butterflies sometimes do happen uh i you learn a lot from them right one of the things that you have to do i think is listen to a bunch of their kacheris if you know that if you're going to play for somebody just go sit down and listen to their concerts right right pick up tendencies pick up you know when they are see how they are doing these forums how they are doing the naraval you know like when they are you know, there will always be a method to the madness right you know, they they are all great big not because you know purely they have talent they have practiced a million times all these things yeah. that's why they are where they are right and that method will be there in the playing in, in the singing so right. just go listen right just listen and you will you will know um that those are the experiences that i that I, once i uh, once i started playing for the visiting artists right the targeted listening became a, an important thing for me very nice hmm. the targeted listening is very important became a very important part of my uh, routine then i know at least to some extent i don't know i know what to expect right, right. so that uh, you know like that's uh, those are that's my important learning and the experiences with all, playing playing with us, all, all these people coming from india is is always great because um, all of them i shouldn't say most all of them are very supportive because nice. they also want their concert to be successful right they gain nothing by not being supportive to you <laughs> true yeah true and when you're on stage irrespective of your experience irrespective of your age i have heard all these you know artists tell that oh on stage you're all just equal so there is no you know a uh, person more experienced and less experienced you just have to work as a team right. so that exactly. that's what i've heard uh, you know, again and again from all of them exactly Play, playing for instruments is different like sikil mala uh, chandrashekar when when she uh, playing for her when he's the flute the speed right understanding what she's doing there is no one to put in talam in front of you right it's uh, right. and uh, you know like some of them know how to put talam with their feet if you watch their feet you can figure I out do. where yeah, the yeah, yeah, things yeah. are right so so in playing for instruments it's it's yeah it's, it's it a different it's a different, it's a different yeah it is a different experience yeah. so uh, i have also seen that some mridangas choose like a very few artists and stick with them uh, while others are just you know they they are uh, available for any artist male or female it doesn't matter young or old new or uh, experienced so what is the difference uh, have you seen the difference being available for more number of uh, more variety of performers and then 
you know than to just stick to a few and just go on their style and does does it help you maintain your standard if you do so if you are like choosy about the main artist mm, no i don't think so you know yeah you 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 get set into a routine pattern that's correct right uh but not necessarily it will make you any any better and if you do the same thing over and over, over again you are bound to get better right so in that aspect yes but playing for different people playing for different situations playing for different moods only make you as a better artist okay so there is no reason i don't see any reason to restrict uh oneself to um you know the uh, there were times when when there like some musicians will only sing will play for uh, uh only male artists right me personally i had a feeling that that was if the only justifying thing for me when, when that is playing for a high pitched shruti mridangam right will not bring out the same nadam that you are trying to get when you are playing for a oru katta ondra katta rendu katta shruti mridangam right? right up until right. veenai right up until flute veenai violin yeah. flute veenai rendu rendra and uh, uh, one one and a half and two those mridangams that shruti range is a very sweet spot for mridangam hmm when people really are, are like love the sound that they are producing they want their kind of comfortable playing in those mridangams right 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 so that could be one reason but other than that yeah uh, you know like uh the um we have legendary singers and legendary instrument players across the board how do you restrict yourself right right yeah, yeah thank thank you for saying that <laughs> yeah so now with all these things that you are uh, doing performing organizing teaching everything uh, what what has become your top priority or do you give all of it equal importance and balance it out um all of them get equal equal balance but if i have to um make one of them important then that is organizing providing opportunity for children that will be that will be that i would say is the uh more important one right you know? it, it it definitely is uh, a challenge these days one to get an opportunity to sing because there's just so many musicians uh, it's very competitive uh, yeah. and rightfully so i mean so many good musicians are there young and uh, you know uh, more experienced and uh, creating a platform for them is definitely one of the best things that we can do being being away from our country and uh, i really am very happy uh, new england area is you know very famous for that you know people are often ask me oh you are living in a really good place you are so lucky to have so many musicians such rich cultural heritage you know your place carries and uh, they also say every weekend there are many multiple programs happening at multiple places so that's that's really good that uh, we are able to do that as well as keep up with you know providing that platform so yeah. thank you i'm so happy you said that so now you have kept your profession passion separate so uh why haven't you chosen to be a full time musician uh or did you did you want to keep it separate uh did you do it deliberately so that you you can actually keep your passion as passion not make it hinder in your profession um it's a very good uh very good question actually choosing between you know, like we went uh, routine did your engineering and did your you know like went into software etc i came to this country and working so that took it that took its own track right to be a successful performer in india you have to put a lot of effort right, right? that that bill gets 10000 our rule it more than any for more than anything it applies to music Yes. you have to put the time in there so if you did not put the time up in there up front you will be middling around you'll just there's no way that you're going to shoot up like a, a star all of a sudden right, right. Like you have to put that 
fundamental work all, uh, to to get up there. So uh, I you know, like did my studies and and came here. Uh, after I came here, um, obviously my work is the breadwinner, normal breadwinner, right? So that 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 continued. Um, but at any point in time, Mridanga was ex- extremely important for me. So, so much so, I always say my work, my identity is not my work. Hmm. My identity is my music. It's right. not my work, right? So, because I'm very clear with that, I'm able to balance. So, if my identity is my work, there is no way I can do what I do today with my with my music. That's not possible. right. Right. So, because I chose not to have my work as my identity my day job as my identity right it allows me to spend time uh and and do what i'm whatever i could do for from a, from a music standpoint so do they choose to keep it separate um, i didn't do anything special it just like came routine it was right? not a conscious decision it was not a conscious decision okay. at all yeah. what will be a conscious decision is if i say one day like i'm i'm you know like re- giving up like i'm retiring from my job and now i'm going to take music as my full time right? right that will be a conscious decision okay i don't know when i will do that but if i do that that will be a conscious decision okay how have you found balance i know uh, i've been around you for uh, too long that i do know that you are a very organized person you are um, you manage time efficiently from you know what i've seen and you are very thoughtful you know when you plan you think of so many things ahead of time every time i've interacted with you for a concert or for uh, you know organizing something hosting somebody you have always asked the right questions and uh, i was i was stumped so i was like oops i never thought about that so how have you gotten so good at this so what is the secret uh thank you for saying those kind words but i think you are kind of uh, saying a little bit more than what i deserve definitely uh, you know uh if if you come and ask my wife how organized i am she'll be like rolling her eyes and say like, what are you talking about aparna <laughs> <laughs> of course we don't get to see that this side no nobody really gets to see what we do so, outside right? of the scene right yeah <laughs> right so, so that's exactly my point so what is the secret <laughs> uh i i i think i don't the blessing i think i have is i don't stress about anything too much at all ha huh. very good point okay um uh, you know i know uh, see some people are uh, obsessive about perfection hmm right so they let perfect come in the way of good hmm okay so and te- and and work get worked up be tense about that all the time right so i am if you know like perfection you chase perfection but you have to be able to celebrate good right so right. that's that's the that's how i look at i look at things and so i don't stress about too much about anything uh that may help may help me stay be able to do multiple things uh yeah because, because when you are calm and not stressed you do allow yourself to multitask better right yeah, the, yeah. I, i cannot pinpoint or say any specific reason of all the things that you said about me the only thing i can think about is i try to you know like be less stressed about things no. it is it is an inference from what i have uh, seen and uh, heard from you heard uh, like you know you ask the right questions and uh, and if if i say oh i never thought about it you immediately have a, a dynamic plan to you know adapt to it or quickly make changes so you know things fall in place so that that i've always seen that in you, you. so that that's that's actually a very you know good quality to possess uh, because if if things don't go the way i plan i i really stress i really you know sometimes get um you know stressed out so that's a good point you bring um yeah thank you for sharing that sure. <laughs> so uh how do you compare yourself now that you have done all of this 
that you shared. How do you compare yourself today to 10 years ago? Um, definitely uh, more um, mature accompanist and a mature person uh, than I was 10 years ago, for sure. This maturity in accompaniment, I 100% give this, give that to Narendra and Mama. Okay. My, the having listened to him play in so many concerts, both his, you know, like young age concerts and all the way through, it gives a, a style, a mental clarity on how you should play for Kritis, how you should like hold the fort when the Kritis is being sung, right? Um, hold the fort without intruding with the singer, but at the same time giving a sub hundred percent support, allowing the singer to go wherever are they are, the instrumentalists to go wherever they want to go and come back. Right. So that strength completely comes from my listening of uh, uh, Narendra Mama's playing, and uh, you know he taught me how to listen to things. Mm. So, so that that makes a big difference. Now, when I listen to somebody else, I know what I'm looking for, right? So, um, so you know, like that is very important. And and the um, the support, the collaboration that I get from all the artists in our, in our all our friends in our area. You said it's a family. It is a family. It's a community. It is a family, right? It is. It so, is. Nobody is competing with anybody else for anything else. Everybody is moving towards the same goal of making music available to everybody and uh, making uh, so that common goal that is being shared in this region, uh, in our area, it's an absolute blessing. This type right. of collaboration that we have uh, has brought you know the the sense of belongingness even more than when it was ten 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 years ago. In our, we're all maturing as teachers and, and, and organizers, right? When yeah. we do that and we have this collaboration, it just makes the whole area better. And that I think that I see as a big, uh, for me, it's a big blessing over the past 10 years. Right, right. Yeah. It is, it is. I feel very blessed uh, being in this area. Uh, as I mentioned, for multiple reasons, you know, one, we get a lot of opportunity. We have a lot of artists, variety of artists, and uh, we get to learn a different uh, perspective about, you know, what we do. So that really adds value. How do you um, motivate yourself? Uh, have you ever had moments like, oh, I wish I had done this? Uh, I wish I had done this earlier in my life or some, something like that. Um, being able to get up every morning healthy is a blessing in itself. Okay, And on top of it, being handed over an instrument or a music like this to us is we, there is, there is no need for additional motivation. This is you know, how many people in this, like billions of people in this world, how many people have the opportunity to do what we do? Right. Right. When you have been, you, have, you know, like we said, like, did Mridangam find you? No. Did music find us? Yes. If somebody, if somebody has, found, music has found us and somebody has given us this opportunity. There is no other motivation needed. Needed. Yeah. That is a very important message for the uh, younger students, younger generation, because they often, uh, you know, feel uh, uh, less motivated to practice. And they they do ask me, auntie, what do I do when there are days when I don't feel like practicing and things like that. And uh, I give them a few tips, you know, as to uh, try to de-stress and then listen. Just listening sometimes, um, you know, motivates you, right? So I, I tell them what I do. So, uh, but what you're saying is even, you know, many levels above. The, you know, unless and until you have a natural uh, way of being disciplined in practicing, you are going to hit a wall every now and then. But yeah. Yeah. if, if, if for, for such occasions, you know, we can't just... Uh, muster up enough energy 
from ourselves but this perspective of feeling thankful and grateful for having even the opportunity to explore and enjoy music yeah. and uh, various things related to music that itself is quite a motivation and uh, thank you so much for sharing that it's it's i think it's extremely important um for everybody not just younger students everybody yeah, i agree yeah just yeah. Uh, yeah. so w- other than that you already gave a very important message my next question was what is your message to young aspiring artists who want to you know uh either take up music as their profession or just continue as passion yeah, any which way what would your main message to them be i have two things to share okay one is i'm going to repeat what you said a few years back to me in a setting i don't know where you said this oh my god <laughs> okay it, i have been telling my students that ever since abara believe me okay okay that is um you do not compete with anybody else you compete with yourself you right. what you did today if you did if you look up look up what you did yesterday and you did better today that means you have you are winning right right so that message is very critical right i still right. say the same thing to my students yeah right so yeah. i'm i'm very happy that you said that to me so that kind of stuck with me like uh, a glue okay thank you so um and the second thing is this i read in a practice sheet of my son's band school band practice sheet right hmm. um, school music practice sheet at, at the bottom there was this this line this teacher had put in right i don't know who's quote it is but good musicians practice until they get it right okay yeah great but the next line is even more important great musicians practice until they cannot get it wrong yeah i have heard that too that's that's right? very important yes so yes. that practice discipline continuously practicing over and over and over again is what it all comes down to there is no shortcut for music right right practice is the way to go about getting better at music that's yeah. what i would say to everybody practice 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 different levels of practice you practice very well you achieve great heights right. you don't practice enough you will see the results accordingly yeah. right yeah. so practice is number one thing and enjoy when you are practicing right don't practice for the sake of practicing but actually enjoy right even if you don't it's like the journey is as important as the destination yeah so you may practice uh like 100 hours you go to a concert stage you may make a mistake right if you don't enjoy your journey of practicing you go to the concert stage and make that mistake your whole thing will become miserable yeah. beginning to finish yeah but if you enjoyed this practice throughout the journey throughout you won't even care if you make a mistake in that stage right because right. you knew you put everything you had to put before the platform right. right right so enjoy enjoy practicing um so that's uh, that's that would be my uh what i would like to share and listen a lot right. listen at a lot to pereva kacheris listening is another way of practicing in my opinion yeah, right correct yeah. correct so that, that that's why for, for to me practice is everything and that's why i named the school abhyas right because abhyas gives you knowledge abhyas gives you experience abhyas gives you happiness so just keep practicing and i tell my students that you keep practicing practice becomes your performance absolutely so your journey becomes your destination absolutely that's a great so, way to put it yeah yeah so that that's 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 what children uh younger students not just children uh, i don't want to just categorize it for very young set of students it's definitely for young adults as well yeah so that is something that uh, you know it's not for others it's you know you don't practice for others as you said don't practice for practice sake 
practice yeah. for yourself, your yeah. enjoyment and connecting, you know, to your inner self. So right. definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, Mali. Uh, I'm so happy I came up with this idea because I've been able to see all of you and I've been able to chat with you and, you know, bring out uh, your perspectives to a wider audience. So thank you so much. Uh, stay safe. Enjoy and uh, uh, keep organizing a lot of uh, concerts. I really hope to uh, be on stage soon with you. And uh, my namaskarams to your parents. Please uh, convey regards to everybody at home. And um, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Aparna. I really yeah. appreciate it. You know, I just love, you know, like our interaction has been going on for, for a pretty long time now. And I'm looking yeah. forward more as well. And uh, this, you know, it's a, again, this is a very calm, casual setup that we are talking here, which is absolutely lovely. You know, like, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts uh, as well. Really sure. appreciate it. Thank you very much. We don't get to do this on a regular basis, right? So correct, I, correct. I really am very happy this thought even came to my mind. So yeah. many people are benefited with this. So <laughs> thank you very much. Stay safe. Yeah. Thank you. You, Have you fun. stay safe as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye. Namaskar. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Namaskar. Yeah.